Hello and welcome to the Sparkle and Thrive podcast. We're filming this live during our social media superhero boot camp. And I wanted to take an opportunity. Uh, normally, um, we film this on our Tech Pixies page, but I've changed it up a little bit today and I'm doing it into our superhero boot camp uh, because I know a lot of women who will be inspired by listening to Gloria's story. Um, so, Gloria, you were a Tech Pixie in. Uh, effectively our social media superhero bootcamp, which was running in April of last year. So 2020, right when the lockdown, yep. the very first lockdown hit. And uh, so you know what it's like to be on the bootcamp. You know what it's like to be, you know, asked to do your Canva vision board and asked to do your first live. You know how, uh, how that made you feel. Um, and, and then you went on to our 90 day transformational program. And now you are pretty much at your year, you're graduating, you're, you're, you know, we, we had cohort 21 was a funny one because you guys kind of graduated three months later. And then now you're like officially finishing up with your full year because we, you know, you give you a whole year's access to the program, not just three months, although we say you, we can, you can complete the program in three months. So tell me, tell your story a little bit to people who don't know it and, uh, and how, you know, what you were doing before, uh, you came to the boot camp, and then uh, what made you made the, make the decision to join the 90 Day Transformational Program? And then let's talk about your journey since then. I was teaching in gyms, in quite a few gyms in London and in Cambridgeshire, and obviously then lockdown hit. And um, because I've been going through a divorce, I had given up my job during my marriage, which I would always say don't really do that <laughs> but I had because I was going to be looked after and then I just had my teaching as a little kind of side and um, part-time job so that's all I had before lockdown was my part-time teaching so it wasn't a huge income it was under a thousand pounds a month but it was still keeping me you know in clothes and food and I moved in with my mum god bless my mum um, so at the beginning of lockdown, when the teaching was stopped in the gym, that was my entire income. Um, so it was a little bit of a shock. And yes, I did. I had done my um, self-assessment so I could actually claim from the HMRC, but it's a small amount compared to what you've been earning. So I was thinking, you know, I need to do something. So I needed to go online. And I'd thought about it previously, but I had no idea how to do it. So then the Tech Pixies thing came up on my Facebook and I've got to be honest, usually I take no notice of Facebook ads whatsoever. But there was just something because it was all women. They were all smiling. It made me click in. And then when I joined the boot camp from the first moment, I just loved it. And I just connected to you because you were just so enthusiastic. You actually spoke to us personally and we could actually speak back because I had signed up onto a couple of other free courses and they were just they were terrible, to be honest, because there was just no connection. And that's what I needed at the time. It was locked down. You're isolated. You just needed someone that you could connect to and learn from. And I just found from the first minute that I could learn something. And there was an awful lot to learn, I have to say. I thought I was kind of OK with social media. And after I'd done the quiz, I was like, OK, so you're not that great at social media. You can post a couple of pictures. You know the funny cat videos. But there is just so much to learn. And as soon as you started talking about the sunflowers and I was like, okay, so, okay, I've got a seed. <laughs> I've just got to grow from there. And so when it came to the end of the four weeks, I was like, oh, I really, really want to do this. So I did. Well, we are so delighted that you did. You've been a wonderful addition to our program. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I know it's daunting to, to 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 learn that much that quickly in that week but you know it also opens up the possibility that hey i can learn quickly and i can learn something new in a short period of time what could i do in a 90-day period of time so yes. talk about the 90-day transformational program in terms of the transformation you went through on it and how you've changed what you're doing on social media and what that's become so i had never done a live and so when you do a one minute live, everyone is like, oh, my goodness, that, that a one minute sounds so long and it feels so long. And I did mine in my pink house coat because I thought, right, I'm just going to get it done after one of the calls. I'm just going to get it done. <laughs> and everyone loved the pink house coat and it got so many um, good um, comments that it really boosts you. And you feel, do you know what, that minute 
took no time at all and it's not that difficult um, and so then you go on you do the course and you just grow in the cat you talked about the canva vision board and i've always been really bad at doing vision boards and i've never actually done one but then when you introduced us to Canva, I was like, oh, I love Canva. This is just amazing. You can just put things together. But I still found it difficult because even though I had looked back at my future self, I was thinking, what shall I put on my vision board? And I had to go for a personal one to start off with because looking at business was really difficult. So I started with a personal one, looking back at my future self, and I could see that as clear as day. So the colors were very different. It's not my branded colors. And then eventually throughout the course, I grew into how I could build my Canva vision board with my branded colors. And as everyone knows, they're very bright. There's got to be bright pink. Um, and so that was totally different. But it helped me get to that point where I could see what I wanted to do for my business and bring it, how I could bring it online. So that's where I kind of am now, where... I've bought classes online and I made a huge, huge mistake in the first lockdown doing it for free <laughs> for three months or so. And it really, it hurt me. I mean, obviously, it hurt me financially, but it made me feel good that I was giving something away for free. But it was just too much. And then it just came back and smacked me in the face and said, come on, you're worth more than free. <laughs> and when you're in the group, the ladies build you up and they and they confirm that you are worth more than zero. <laughs> so that's where the course has really helped me grow, not only with the technology part of it, which is a huge part of it, but feeling that you are worth more than zero, especially as a woman, because I gave up a job to be zero. <laughs> Why did I do that? You know, and I've got, I, now I'm on my own, gone through a divorce, so I'm at zero, I have to start again. And it's, the course is really, the ladies, I, I can't emphasize how fantastic the ladies are. I mean, they're virtual friends. We haven't even met. Most of us have not met. I've met, met a few few of the ladies, and it's been really nice to actually get together in between the, the, the lockdowns with a few of them. But you feel like you've known these people for a long time because you have so much in common. And then that that small commonality grows into something really amazing and the community has really helped during lockdown to make you feel better as a person but better as a business person and the possibilities really open up for you when you've done the course so yeah so what's what do you think it was a huge part of your transition from i'm gonna give this away for free to <laughs> no i am worth charging for this and and i know there was a lot of there's a there's a journey there right and so Tell us a little bit more about that journey. How did you get the courage to start charging for what you do? Um, how did you get the courage to come up with a price point? And how did you get the courage to ask people to join your fitness membership so that they would actually pay, start paying you? I mean, to be honest, I started off in the kind of the easy way, you know, with people that already knew me. And, and you know, a few of those were willing to, to pay more than maybe they would have done before because they had a gym membership before they had a gym membership and I'd be there for free in in that case but now I'm asking them to pay me personally and it all seemed a little bit difficult because this is going to sound really really silly but we had the free classes and then I put a price of one pound fifty nobody paid the one pound fifty absolutely nobody so I thought, okay so let's put four classes which are chargeable and one class which is donation nobody made a donation but they still all booked onto that class in particular and didn't make a donation and, and then I started thinking do you know what I've been doing this course I'm worth more than one pound fifty and I'm just going to say look if even now the price could probably go up but I want to give a good deal so if I say six pounds for a class if you don't want to pay the six pounds don't come and that's that's what you help me with. And I call you my um, inbox nudger because you're going, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> So if you're not willing to pay for it, then don't come. And then if it's outside of my group, because I want to give something that is really achievable and affordable, and I'm looking at what people would pay for gyms as well. So there is a, there is a cutoff, really. 
So what I can provide for a certain price, I'm willing to do that. But outside of that, if someone wanted me to do like a one to one class or teach for their group, then my voice came out and I went 50 pounds. It's 50 pounds an hour. Now, I've done that recently. I can tell you I've done that recently. And someone has told me that's not enough. Wow. So I'm just waiting for them to come back to me. <laughs> I've said that to somebody. They've said, how much do you charge for half an hour? So I said, well, 25 pounds. And she said, well, that's not enough. I'm going to tell them it's more. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for that to come back. So it just shows you that if, you know, they want you, this is a, this is a corporation that are looking to pay for me to come and teach for them online. Um, but my six pound an hour, I'm happy with that because I'm giving a few classes a week. It helps people that can't get to the gym. They come into a little community. But I've actually found the voice to say, if you don't want to pay for a whole month, then you have to pay a little bit more for an individual class. If you want me outside of the group, then you're going to have to pay more than you'd even pay for a monthly group. <laughs> yeah, that's important to understand that there is, it's the Ascension model, right? So if someone just wants to dip in and out at their own leisure, they, they're they going to pay a price that's different than someone who's paying a, a you know, yeah. a membership. And then if someone wants one-on-one -on -one attention, they, they have to pay more because that's, you know, you could be serving a group of people at the same time. So that's really interesting. Yeah, Michelle just said, I realized that even at 60 pounds an hour, that's only one pound a minute. Yeah. And that's yeah. so true. It's so true. And, you know, we, uh, we don't hesitate, you know, like if I need, if my, if my toilet is blocked, I don't hesitate to pay a plumber 65 to 85 pounds at whatever time it is a day to come and do a five minute job to fix it because I want to use my toilet. Right. Yeah. And when we're not understanding that we, d we use other people's services all the time and we pay the price that they ask us because that solves the problem that we're trying to solve you know, it's, it's really important to understand that. And it's interesting. I mean, there's, there's, um, in the online coaching world, especially for people who've done very well, the price for coaching is astronomical, you know, to get someone one-on-one -on -one is almost impossible, but the price that you would pay is very high, like 2000 pounds for an hour kind of high. And, um, yeah, it would wow. so true. But what, what's, what's important is they know their value they know that the wisdom that they've got, that the experience that they've got, that they, you know, that they can actually help. And that's why they can charge that much. It's just like a lawyer, you know, and, and other people that you go to work with, they, they know their, what they're doing and they feel confident in that. Um, let's talk about some of the hurdles that you had to overcome though, because obviously the first hurdle was knowing your worth and starting to charge for your individual courses, your monthly membership and your one on ones and really putting a price on that that made sense for you uh, as well as for the people. What about um, some of the um, the things that slowed you down from moving on to the membership sooner? And I'm only saying this because I know we have a very long history of direct messages yeah. where it's like, so have you got your have you got your sales page up yet? Have you got your, you know, have you got your, have you figured out your financial plan yet? So, um, yeah, let's talk about that. Were they actual technical blocks or were they meant, were they more a mental block on different things? I think it's both. So once you believe you're kind of worth a little bit more, it's like, oh, but what if no one else thinks you're worth that? And then you've got this, this, this fear just comes over you. And I know you felt this fear as well. What if no one actually cares? What if no one wants to join my group? What if no one wants to do Zumba on a Thursday? What if I've chosen the wrong days? What if the class is the wrong length? What if my lipstick's the wrong cut? Everything. You just go, you know, you just start to kind of pick away at all the things you've just built up to say you're worth that. And then it just stops you from moving forward so that obstacle is just a real smack in the face and then you need someone in your ear going have you done that have you thought about that so for me I mean I had started putting the group together because I wanted to offer a lot I guess it's probably too much but I wanted to offer how to's how to do certain moves how to do Zumba moves because people are always asking me can you slow it down but in a class it's not like that you just go with the flow and you pick it up so I wanted to put a few bits in you know I wanted to add a little bit of my own kind of self a little bit of nutrition a little bit of um, kind of positivity so it, it all adds up to quite a lot of background before you because you can't just open the group and have nothing in it 
So that was my take. So I've got to do all this stuff before I start. And you just said to me, well, just start. <laughs> so I did. But I did already have quite a lot of things. And thank goodness I'd learned how to use Canva is my absolute godsend because I set up all my templates. And then pre-scheduling has become something that I do once a month, which I never did before. So that is really great as well. Yeah, um, you posted um, in the group recently. So in our 90 Day Transformational group, we, which everyone um, who joins the program gets to stay in even after they finish their year, uh, we do every Friday, we do a, a kind of a, a wins and self-promotion. Uh, and you had posted in there that you had pre-scheduled 40 posts. You were good to go for the month of April. Just had to tweak it. Actually 55 I'd done. Wow. I do try and do one thing a day, even if it's just um, a positive quote. So I basically got, um, it's not a very good planner. It's one that I've drawn myself. It's got all the colors on so I know what I'm doing for each day for the whole month so I can just set it up and then if there's any days that I can I can go in and add something ad hoc if I need to so if I've made a mistake which is quite often so I then put, I put an ad hoc mistake one in there that I, I couldn't post my video or something like that so I'm quite honest about the failures as well because you you know someone did say to me do you think that everything you do is too perfect and that puts people off and um, I don't know whether it does, but I do want it to be the best it can possibly be. And that was probably another block is I was thinking it's not good enough. It's not good enough. I need to change that. And it's not good enough. Um, but you do have to kind of fall into things, fall over things and just and just go with it. And just, you know, do you know, put your hands up, go, do you know what? I spelt that wrong or I put in the wrong time. I put in the wrong link. And oh, I, I, you know exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah. I've had those problems too, you know, yeah. it's, and, and and it's really important that you just acknowledge it and just, you know, kind yeah. of say, Hey, there was a mistake and move on. And it's interesting. We've had in our last, um, in the last intake that we had for uh, the boot camp that led into the 90 day transformational program, we had a lot of mistakes on the email. We changed email teams kind of like one day before the launch and uh, of the program. And it was really interesting because we made uh, a bunch of mistakes just because it was a whole new team and the timing was, you know, not great. And anyway, some people handled it really well and some people didn't. And we had people writing back going, I would never work with you. You're so disorganized. And it's like, you know, well, that's, we don't want you to work with us because we're human, right? Humans make, make mistakes. And, you know, if you think we have to be perfect, then we're definitely not the right place for you. But I think, yeah, I think, I think making mistakes is really important. I also you know, it's really interesting, the pre-scheduling thing, because a lot of people, when they come into our program, they don't know anything about pre-scheduling uh, and they're not up to speed on how important that is. And actually what it does is it gives you time back as the business owner or as the person who works in the marketing department for a company. It gives you time back to do other things so that you're not always on social media. You're not always creating. You get to choose and you get to be in control of the time that you spend on social and the time that you don't spend on social. So the, the, the pre-scheduling concept just means, you know, you've got a routine and you can just stick to that routine. You know what days you got to show up live, you know what you do. So tell us about your membership. Tell us what, um, what it entails uh, and tell us what's working and uh, you know, what's not working and what you're going to be doing in the future. So it's, well, it's, it's on the, it's simmering, should we say? So I've started, I've got people that have come back for three months, so they're resubscribing, which is always nice to know. Um, I've I've had to change times of classes. I've taken a class off. I thought that people would like to do a class on a Saturday, but it turned out nobody turned up on a Saturday. I'd be there on my own, and I'd wait 15 minutes, and then I'd just put a thing in saying class cancelled. But you see, I thought people, you know, I always thought that in the week was more difficult, but it turns out that it's the other way around people want the weekend for themselves so I've actually got one less class than I had when I started because it wasn't working so that's fine no one has actually said hold on a minute we're getting one less class because there's a lot of pre-recorded classes in there and you can just do them when you want to so I think that works that you can change the classes around pretty easily the pre-recorded definitely works because people can go back and you can do your son you can do your sun breath. I'm definitely a pre-record check. Um, <laughs> because my, it doesn't work, the times don't work for me, but what does work for me is, you know, 
you know, choosing when I want to do it. So I can yeah. you know, do it with my daughter or I can, you know, do it first thing in the morning, you know, so it makes a big difference. And there's a good amount of pre-recorded in there now because I've recorded some of the live classes and put them in. I've done um, a Zumba class, which is to unlicensed music so that I could record that and put that in so you can actually do a class. And so I think that really works. And it did scare me when they changed units to guides because I thought I'd lost absolutely everything. And I was thinking, oh, my God. God, all that work, and I was having a good old panic. But yeah, so it's great that you can have units where people can go and just have a look around. And the free recipe book was good. I don't know if anyone ever uses it, <laughs> but you know, I use that in my posts as well. So I've got a lot. Yeah, of I was going to say you so started back. posting some of those recipes back, kind of yeah. bringing it back to the surface. Yeah, so that people can actually know there's another three books actually in the in the group that you can get for free so um you can actually go and have a look at those so yes yeah, so i just use some of those because they're, they're nice pictures they're nice recipes and it actually just reminds people oh yeah i might make that today or or not i think you should just, do a recipe uh, challenge where we all have to like make it and put pictures of it in the group i'm oh yeah that's, that's in the cards as well <laughs> i've got a few yeah. things in the cards i i had an idea of having just having like a coffee morning where everyone just comes in bake the cake that you you know you want to bake your own cake or bake your own snack or whatever um because i really enjoyed doing the falafels with the syrian late with the syrian late sisters i mean i made my own falafels and i was really chuffed with myself to be honest so um yeah i think it's a good idea if, we, if i put something like that in the group so i what i do need to do is more lives but it's just fitting it in with my office job and my teaching and the group so i do find it quite hard to juggle everything and i can really see why people need a social media manager um but it's just something i need to do um, by myself at the moment so i think i think most of the group works i mean may, maybe you can tell me otherwise <laughs> it works for me i mean you know every I, i'm yeah. kind of like i've got to you know i got to get a couple sessions in every month just to make sure that i'm getting my value you know that in terms of you're providing it i've actually got to take it up right and that's yeah. the other thing is how your members actually take it up and and it's it, you know it's interesting the barriers that people have to even fitness right so you know it's about also um prioritizing yourself and saying okay actually this half hour of you know legs bums tums or this half hour of um you know yoga is more important to me than you know work right now and i need to find that balance and i think you know it's, it's interesting a lot of people i know who are very successful, they say there really is no balance. It's about, it's actually just about harmonizing them, you know, so that you can kind of do them uh, in harmony. And interestingly enough, uh, when we did the, so we did the spring um, festival and Gloria was the opening act of our spring festival. So every day, this is a great, great thing to do if you run a charity or even if you run an organization that's got a community we did a five day festival. So um, it was on Facebook in a private group and every single day for half an hour, we had somebody else coming in to do something different. So we had the Syrian sisters come and teach us how to make falafels. We had Gloria coming in to do a Zumba um, dance party. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we had all, we had a woman come in, Rosalind, she came and educated us on uh, female composers in opera. And then she actually sang opera to us. We had another woman, um, another Rosalind, who gave us a walking tour of the, the great women of London, uh, the statues, you know. Um, so it was very, very interesting. And it was very short and sweet, just a half an hour every day of different people. But I have to say, yours was great. It just kind of like, I stood up from my desk and I was like doing Zumba in the middle of the day and I was so energized, yeah. <laughs> And you can see how clunky I was, but I was so energized. Like it was actually, it really changed just standing up and doing that and just getting music going. And, you know, I can see yeah. how powerful it is and how important it is to do. And, and I actually, I can see how important it is to do in the middle of a stressful day or, you know, to break up a day. I was, I was surprised so many people turned up at, at 12 o'clock on a Monday. I was, I was surprised because you, you kind of think that that's not really a good time, but it was it was just really lovely to see everybody enjoying themselves and that is the whole thing it brings your endorphins up it brings your hormone level up so that you and your serotonin so that you actually it's your happy hormones and that's what dancing does yoga is kind of a little bit more obviously meditative but it's the dancing actually makes you feel young it makes you feel happy and so then it, it makes you feel energized so it's um 
it's a very it's a very clever concept Zumba because everyone thinks oh I can't do Zumba but it's not about being able to dance brilliantly it's just about moving and enjoying and smiling is the most important thing and I smile like a Cheshire cat to some of these tracks I just can't help I just can't you help can't, that. you can't it's so important I mean it's, it's so true uh, so tell us now um what I love about what you did was when you did finally get your membership up and you had paying customers you then were uh, earning more than the monthly course fee. So you were able to, you know, you're actually not only covering the course fee that you, you know, invested in, but you've actually got a little bit more. But yeah. what's, tell us about the future plans. How are you gonna grow this, uh, this membership? Because you've got a lovely group of ladies in there yeah. and there's real opportunity to, to grow that. So tell us about that. So obviously I've been speaking to some of the other lovely tech pixies because they're always there to help bring you up. So I've spoken to the lovely Paula about click funnels and literally my head just went. <sighs> so yes, yeah, so I'm trying to sort out something to do with the click funnel. I don't completely understand it. I'm going to be honest. I don't completely understand it, but Paula's amazing, so. But Paula understands, that. so that's all that matters. Oh yeah, she she definitely understands. <laughs> well, she so, won a competition yeah. that they run, which is just yeah. incredible. I think that's that's really exciting, you know, to to learn how to create a sales funnel. That's effectively yeah. what you're doing. So you've you've you know you've tested the concept, you've done it organically. You know, you have your. Are you at 14 members now? Um yeah, I have um a couple. It's so a Paula is obviously in there because she's I let her in there to have a look at the group to see what she thought so she thinks it's great so that's always nice to hear um and my mum's in. yeah and your mum yeah well <laughs> anyway the point is let's say you've got like 14 members or so in the group now and um and but what you've done is you've tested the concept and that's what's really yeah. important i think for people who are you know like um okay i want it to be bigger i want it, i've got a bigger vision i want to have more pe more people in you got to get your first few people in, right? Yeah. You got to get the first few people to say yes. And tell us what it felt like when the first person who signed up for your membership signed up. What did that feel it, like? It was just so cool. I was like, oh my God, I've got someone that someone got actually paid to come. And it was just really, really cool. And it was a pixie. So um, it was, that was kind of double cool as well because these are really talented and knowledgeable women. <laughs> so they knew that they were obviously going to get something that was a little bit nice and they, and they'd come back and they'd come back. So that that's even better, but it was, it just made me go, I said to my mom, oh, I've got one. <laughs> and it was really, really, it really made me happy. And it was just one. And um, what happened when I you still got feel that now. Like, oh my God, they resubscribed. <laughs> what so what said, happened when you hit 10? What was that like? I was like, that was my goal. And I thought, you know what, I'd just be happy with 10 people. And I actually hit that. And I was thinking, do you know what, when you put it out there and it comes back, really, you should be putting out there more. You should be saying, I'm looking for 20. And that is, you know, I'm, I'm looking too small. I'm still looking yeah. too small. I need to look bigger. But I love that you said that because so many people, they go through that. So, you know, getting your first customer is very, very exciting. Getting your first 10 customers, and this is repeatable business too. This yeah. isn't just like 10 customers and you got to go find 10 more. This is 10 customers that come yeah. back month after month after month, you know, and then you start going towards 11 and 12 and 13 and 14. And we have another student in our group, um, Carrie, she's from Wales. She's a math teacher and she uh, helps, um, she works with particular, with children who have particularly um, tricky, uh, you know, when it comes to math, they're a bit trickier to teach and uh, to help. And she's come up with this methodology that helps them. And her goal, very similar to yours, was I want one, because hers is repeatable uh, as well, because the students she works with every single week. So her goal was to have one uh, or five. I was looking at her vision board the other day. It was to have five students. Or five, yeah, to work with five students. And uh, and then she came on to one of our calls and she said, I just hit my 21st student. And she's like, I don't actually have time to do any more students. Like I'm at, like, and she's like, she's got a wait list now, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think, I think it is, it is really important, you know, cause now she's got to think, well, how do I serve, how do I serve hundreds yeah. of children who need me without, you know, how do I change that? So now she's looking at how she does that. But it's really interesting um, when you set a goal and then you achieve the goal 
you kind of go, oh, well, then I probably should have, you know, thought bigger or I could think bigger or what do I think now? You know, and that's mm-hmm. there's a lot of questions that come up when you set a goal and then you meet the goal. And, and a lot of people struggle to meet the goal. Right. So, you know, it's it's also <laughs> on the other hand, when you do meet a goal, sometimes having what feels like a small goal is really important because if you if you can achieve that, then it's much easier to then think bigger. You know, and I always tell people in the early days of Tech Pixies, I didn't have a goal to help a thousand women return to work, change careers or start a business, you know, through our 90 day transformational program. I had a goal of helping 12 women go back to work. That was the goal, right? We accomplished that goal and it was like, okay, let's help another 12 women, right? And it took me a long time to think, well, maybe we could help more than 12 women at a time, you know? <laughs> and so I was, it was when I realized I could only be in one city at the same time. So as you know, and I could be in two cities at the same time, but I think it's, it's, you know, we evolve, right? We evolve. And, you know, the goal that I had after the first 12 women was 100 women. That was the goal. And then after 100 women was a thousand women. Right. And we're still working on that one. We've we've actually helped. That's the funny irony here is, you know, I I said I want to help a thousand women. And actually, we've just in that April cohort last year alone, we had a thousand women in the free training. And it was like, oh, wait, hold on. I meant to say I want to help a thousand women who are paying, you know, yeah. And we were doing things for free. And of course, now we are doing um, we have a small the boot camp is is a paid program now. And so women who go through that are paying and that is amazing. And they are getting results, which is also absolutely wonderful. Uh, and we have helped thousands of women get started on that journey. And that's really exciting to me. But I still know, you know, I've got a bottle of champagne in the fridge that says a thousand you know, women on our 90 day transformational program, because that's, that is my goal. And once we hit a thousand, then I'll set a new goal. Um, but I think it's important to then also celebrate along the way. Um, so I love that you are bringing on another tech pixie to help you work on the sales funnel and uh, help you get that in front of more people and help you, yep. you know, move more people into your, into your program because your program is really amazing. And, you know, you, okay. what you offer is such a, it's a piece of, you know, it's a piece of life. Like it's, it's literally giving people their life, uh, giving people extra years on their life because of yeah. the youthfulness that it brings to it. So I think that's so important. The gloriousness of it. You need the to glory. <laughs> so the other I thing it. I meant to mention that I am going to do is obviously tomorrow, uh, the Facebook ads workshop. So I'm going to look into that as well, because I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for Facebook ads. So there's obviously something in it I didn't see before because, um, yeah, because, you know, when they come up and you go, oh, that's a Facebook ad. So I have to change my view on that. And I need so I need to look into that, too. And I have done a Facebook ad, but I did it by accident because I pressed something. <laughs> I ended up promoting something I didn't really want to promote. So I really need to know what I'm doing. Well, and that's I'm, where but- that's where the. The power of organic social media, like once you know how to do organic social media, then you can take your best stuff and you can get it in front of more people. And that's where having a sales funnel is really, really important. And, you know, that's that's the next level. But you can't. So important. People understand this. You can't start doing Facebook ads. You can't start doing sales funnels if you don't know the fundamentals. You can't build, you know, you don't have the courage to build a website that charges a monthly membership fee if you don't have the fundamentals, right? And that's what I think is so important to understand is that, you know, the fundamentals are, it's, it's like having a concrete foundation in a house before you build the house, right? It's like, uh, I always say, it's like building a house on rock and not building a house on sand. It's that idea that if you have the foundations and the community support, I think people underestimate, you know, there's a lot of self-paced courses out there that you can do, but if you don't have the community support and you don't have the coaching when you need it to get you over any of those barriers or hurdles that might hold you back, that's where the process goes much, much, much slower. Mm-hmm. So by having a supportive environment, by having step-by-step help, and by you know being surrounded by people that want to see you succeed and are, are pinging you to say, have you done it yet? Have you done it yet? Have you done it yet? You know, that's how, what moves you forwards. And then being in a community where everyone's got their strengths, you know, and different people have 
you know, different people specialize in websites, different people specialize in graphics, different people specialize in, you know, funnels, and everyone can pitch in where is needed to help you move forwards. And it's very exciting to watch um, that unfold. But I think having that support really, really matters and that community really matters. And, you know, you could do it on your own. I, I, I guess I would I think you this. did. I don't well, think tell, you me where, tell me where you think your life will be now. We know mm -hmm. what it's like now, but where would it, if you didn't do the 90 day transformational program, just where do you think, what I mean, would you, how would personally, it be Personally, I'd just be in the same place, just posting a couple of pictures here and there. I was, I was really bad. I was really bad at, you know, doing it <laughs> consistently. That was my biggest problem that I was not consistent. And if you're not consistent, then the algorithm's just going to go, well, you don't care. No one cares about you. So you have to be consistent. So with my Instagram, I've just done, I just do three posts a week on my feed because that's what I can keep up with. And you know, I'm a bit kind of, <laughs> a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my grid. I'm just trying to change it around now. Um, but then I will just post stories ad hoc when, when I want to. And I, I find that works for me that I can just post stories when I want, but my grid is three days a week and I set that out. Yeah, my, but you can say you, you do know. not have to post every single day. People make that mistake. Yeah. They think I've got to post every day and you do not. Yeah, I finally did an article on my LinkedIn, two articles actually. So I finally did an article and I linked it to my website. And then obviously I could use parts of that and link it to my Facebook. And so I've taken that on board that you can write something quite large and then use snippets of it elsewhere. So that was a really useful tip. I would never have thought about that ever before. Um, and just be when on when your people are on. <laughs> be where your people are. <laughs> it makes really, it's really simple. But when you don't do the training or you're not told that, it doesn't really connect with what you're doing you're just posting because you're posting and then obviously the insights i'm not amazing with insights but at least i know where to go and have a look and go oh that didn't do very well or that time didn't do very well at least i know that now um so i think if you don't do the learning and you don't have people that can help you in a community then i would have just been stuck in the same place i probably would wouldn't have been very happy I probably would have been one of those people in lockdown that's going oh my god I've got no one to talk to I haven't seen anybody but you know the pixie community you always feel like there's somebody there and it can either be you're on a zoom call with somebody or you're on the phone so you know because I I chat to pixies and then I've also been talking to pixies so that we can you know come together and do something together so um obviously Yvonne that I met when we were doing the testimonials you know we we're talking about the hotel hopefully you can get out uh, there and let's do, do the it. yoga let's out do there with Yvonne. in Jamaica yeah and also with Flora with her cooking because she was amazing doing her her cooking online and doing her sushi so we've had conversations about you know going down and doing a weekend retreat at her place as well so there's lots of ways that you can not only the technical stuff um, that you can pick up from people but you know the networking as well and you can just see things that will fit together and there's so many talented women on this course that I would never have met before that you know you just feel like you have a whole different family you know and people are always saying to me oh how's that pixie thing going you know I see you doing your pixie thing <laughs> what is I your pixie thing <laughs> I said look you need to get on that course. And I have had friends come on actually and do the free boot camp as well. So I think yeah, it's well, a very positive thing that I did, a massively positive thing. Yeah. No, and I think that point is really important. The fact that if you don't change something, nothing changes. And, you know, I think the, the very first step is to say, okay, I want something to change. The next step is to educate yourself and then decide, yeah. you know, if it's, if it's the right change for you, you know, a whole point of, of doing our superhero boot camp is really to say, am I interested in social media? You know, is it something that I want to pursue? And sometimes people finish it and they go, okay, I know a lot more than I knew before, but this isn't really for me. And some people are like, heck yeah, this is for me. I'm, I, you know, where do I sign up? I mean, it's the funny thing. I've already, we've already had a few emails where people are like, I, where do I sign up? It's like, you can't sign up yet. You know, just calm down. Yeah. But it is good to know that, that, um, you know, people are 
seriously considering, you know, investing in their future. And, and what I know is rarely, if ever, have I met someone who's invested in their future that's regretted it, you know, who's taken the step. The only time that people regret it is when it, when what they bought wasn't what was on the box, you know, yeah. it's where they say, okay, I, I signed up for something, but then I didn't actually get what I was told that I was going to get. And so, you know, we work really hard to over deliver to make sure that people get what they, what we say they're going to get. And, and, you know, and you get two weeks to try it out before you make a decision, a definitive decision. So it's, so we also don't want you to make a huge decision like that without testing, testing it out and, and making sure that, you know, it really is the right community and really is the right vibe for you. Um, but yeah. I, I, I just, I wanted to bring you on to the podcast again, because I thought, you know, we when we interviewed you the first time, uh, it was really more about the challenges that you had to overcome as a single mom with a child um, that had some, uh, you know, challenges growing up. And you really, that was a wonderful story. And that gave a lot of inspiration to a lot of women who know what it's like to be in the same shoes that you are also in uh, as, you know, uh, as a mother who's who's got, you know, hasn't had the easiest path as a mother, but I wanted to do another follow-up uh, interview with you so that we could just see how you were doing and get, get a little bit more um, into the, the, the membership and, you know, the fact that it's been now running for three months, you have repeat customers, they're coming back. And I just, it's so important for people to see that, that story that, you know, here, here's the struggle and here's, here's the, here's the reality. And here's how you got through that story, you know, how you got through that, how you overcame your fears, how you launched this membership, <laughs> and how you take care of the people in it, and, uh, and how they keep coming back for more. So, you know, it's a very exciting, um, it's a very exciting conversation to be having. So tell me now when you think, you know, 10 years forwards, and you meet your future self, what is she, what is she telling you? What, is, what's, what, what do you see? She's probably telling me what took you so long. <laughs> you know, why didn't you just why didn't you just start before? Because it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. And, you know, you're quite capable of doing what you think you can. Because I, we, we could keep saying they're obstacles, but actually they're just challenges to see whether you really want it enough. It's, they're not there to stop you. They're there to see whether you can get over them and around mm -hmm. them. Or under them and um and a lot of the time I can but usually my obstacles are more you know about personal life and then I think that's what stops me building a kind of a a more putting my business head on because I've never thought myself as you know like a business woman I'm kind of create I'm very creative but it's just putting that creativity onto paper and then putting it into something that is going to be financially successful i think that's that's the hardest that's been the hardest bit for me so this is kind of that little journey on the way to be a bring the creativity what's in here onto kind of paper or onto keyboard um and just pushing it forward and, you know it can be a slow process and it can be a tough process because i still go oh my god i don't understand that what did i just do? as you know <laughs> i just you know it got to paypal and i was like I don't understand coding. I don't know what it means by a sandbox. I don't, I just don't know. So then I just put that to the side and I went for something else, which works for me because. Yeah, you, you set know. up a website on Square, didn't you? And then yeah. you set up a membership through Square. Yeah, that was even by accident because <laughs> I had gone to MailChimp and I thought, right, let's do this MailChimp thing. Because even that, I was like, oh, I don't understand MailChimp. So I managed to set up a landing page on MailChimp and then it said, Oh, connect to your square. And I was like, what is square? So then I went and looked at that. And then I ended up buying a website <laughs> on Square, which was very cheap. I bought the cheapest version, but I I've done a page. It's got my, you know, it's got a second page on it. It's got all the things I need on it. You've read it a million times and told me move this around, do that. So it all helped. And I'm quite happy with it, you know, because I've done it myself. And I've got a lot of friends that are saying, oh, I've just paid someone 600 pounds to do this website. And now I've got to pay 50 pounds for him to change a paragraph. And I'm thinking, you need to actually get on tech fixes and learn the WordPress. No, but that's the crazy thing is what I see happen all the time is 
we teach the social media, you know, the, the, the foundations of social media, plus the foundations of WordPress and MailChimp. We teach the foundations. But what happens is the confidence from learning six or seven different pieces of technology in a short period of time completely removes the barrier of learning another piece of technology. There is no barrier. You've just learned five social media networks, two additional pieces of software. You've just learned seven pieces of software. An eighth piece of software does not daunt you. A ninth yeah. piece of software does not daunt you. And that is so, so, so true. And it's that's where that's where the breakthroughs happen because a long time ago we stopped teaching, you know, the, the website course because really we found people didn't need it. They were once they had the confidence with the other skills, they could just work it out. They could figure it out. Um, and obviously we have, you know, we have the, the, the WordPress bonus, which helps understand how to use WordPress from a marketing perspective, because a lot of people don't understand that. And, you know, making sure that your pages from your website look good on social media, all that good stuff. Um, but uh, Michelle has a great comment here on what you had to say. She says um, she loved that what you said about challenges, you know, challenges uh, are there to see if you want it enough. You know, they're not they're not there as obstacles to stop you. And I loved I loved that what you had to say as well. It's more of a hurdle, isn't it? It's, it's 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 more of a hurdle. So if you think of a hurdler and they're looking down that track, they got to get over those ten hurdles. And I would just look at it and go, oh, well, I, I'd have to crawl underneath, but at least I'd get through it. <laughs> yeah. You know? well, and if you've got to said... crawl underneath, crawl underneath. If you've got to go around it, circumvent it for and go back to it, do that. But just know that you're going to get to the end line. It's just how how badly do you want to get to that end line? And if you're an athlete, that's all you look at. You don't look at the actual hurdle. You're just looking at the finish line. And sometimes we forget that there's a finish line. <laughs> well, yeah. and I think, you know, I heard once someone say, and I think it was probably a book like Into the Void or something like that, but it was the idea that if there are no obstacles, there is no mountain to climb, right? And if anyone who's ever climbed a mountain knows when you get to the top of the mountain, you get this glorious view, and you don't get the glorious view if you don't overcome the obstacles along the way, because that's what makes the mountain the mountain, right? And, you know, there's a reason that very few people get to the mountain, because it's hard. Uh, but if you can persevere and get to the top of the mountain, the view from the top is is always worth it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think uh, you have climbed a mountain this last year that has <laughs> been unbelievable. And I'm so proud of you. And I wanted to share your story. Uh, so thank you very much for your time um, today. And and thank you for sharing that story and all the hurdles uh, that you crawled over, under, <laughs> leapt around, knocked over <laughs> to get yeah. to the finish line. I zoomed and, over. <laughs> yeah. And now, you know, it's just about raising the bar, right? Now it's about, okay, yeah. so, all right. So now I've got the goal that I set, which is amazing. Let's set a new one and let's, you know, yeah. see what we can do there. And I think that combination of, you know, figuring out a sales funnel and getting ads running to that sales funnel, that's where your growth in your business is going to come. But you never could have got there if you hadn't done the foundational work. And I think that's so, so, so important. And and also have the, the community and the coaching to support you to get you there. Yeah. And you, Joy, obviously, because you're my nudger. You're my inbox nudger who go, you're like my little voice that's going, have you done this? Why have you not? <laughs> so I'm going, yes, yes, I know I should. I should. Yes. I, I only <laughs> pick up a little people. joy. <laughs> I only pick on people who I know want to accomplish something. You know, if some, if, well, if someone says, <laughs> if someone says, this is what I want, I'm going to bug you yeah. until I see you get it. So I do really appreciate it. And I love that you're in the group and I love seeing you do your, I, I absolutely love that video that you posted of you doing your bit because I could see you were really enjoying it. So. Yeah. Well, it did get me moving, <laughs> put me in a good mood. Yeah. And we're so, so glad that you are in our program and that you took time out of your day today. Uh, Michelle says, thank you both. So thank you, Michelle, for you're listening. Welcome. <laughs> and uh and and i can't wait to you know catch up with you again when you've your m membership has surpassed 100 <laughs> members and we'll be talking about yeah, what that's that like fab. yes that'd be fabulous wouldn't it come that join <laughs> all right well thank you so much gloria you're welcome joy have a great day